40-year-old Carmen certainly stands out in a crowd. Since she had her first hormone shots 20 years ago, she's been working as a nightclub dancer and stripper, and for the last eight years as an entrepreneur of so-called girly shows. The self-styled transsexual from Taumrenui has also served time in Mount Crawford Prison for running a brothel. The twilight world is her world, and she's nearly completed her memoirs. She lists among her friends prominent businessmen and politicians. Their forays into her world won't escape coverage in the book. They'll be quite lucky because their names won't be mentioned. And they'll be linked to prostitutes, That's right. transvestites and, and transsexuals. Yeah. And there are some quite important community and business leaders involved in this shadier side of life in Wellington. Yes, there is. You think some of the people back home in the electorates would get rather a shock if they knew what their local members were up to here. I think so really. In one way it would have been nice if their names were in the open because a lot of society and business people today laugh at homosexuals, prostitutes, queers, lesbians and female impersonators. But I think if their names were revealed in this book, I think we'll get the last laugh. And Carmen, you must really be appalled at the Suppose the lack of support for the likes of the homosexual law reform in the Houses of Parliament. Do you see some of those people that you know not actively supporting any reform up there? I think a lot of them are, are, are frightened, or rather shy, or I think most of them are frightened because I think if they do go there and support and be seen on TV or in the paper, a lot of them lose their good jobs uh, they're in. Are some of our members of Parliament homosexuals? I think there is one that I do know of. And on the bisexuality question? Mm, there's quite a few. In recent years, Carmen says there's been an increasing demand for prostitutes. According to her, Wellington is the vice capital and core girls have plenty of high paid work. They're making quite a bit. They can make anything from... Um, $30 a short time, they can go up to $50, anything to 100 they can make anything like $200 a night, that's if they want to. Do you have strong views on the legalisation of prostitution, or do you think it should still continue as a sort of a backstreet, unofficial business? No, I really do think in New Zealand they should have a, a, a very big place, a big... Um, uh, house for this entertainment out of town where it's away from children and somewhere out in the country where these people can go to. I think prostitution should be legal and um, I think it should be away anyway from children and I think it should be legal and um, I know in Auckland they're clearing them up there and they're all coming to Wellington but I think in time the police will harass them here too. While this former male nurse prepares to blow the lid off the vice scene in this country, she feels she's paved the way for others of her ilk to overcome embarrassment and to rub shoulders with the daily workers. The public, she says, are more tolerant. Well, in my time, I'm going back in the early teenage days, uh, people were very, very conservative. And they, I think when they looked at me, I think they thought that I had came from another planet because I was so unusual and I was so different and it didn't really worry me because I am me and I've always wanted to be the things that I wanted to do in life and I've always did them and I think I've made it more easier for them, for a lot of them actually, in New Zealand because in 1966, I think it was, I went to court, I was working in a nightclub and I went to court, dressed, uh, the police picked me up and I went to court dressed as a woman. And when I appeared at the court, the police told me to go home and dress in men's clothes, and I wouldn't go. And I said to them, well, look, you caught me dressed as a woman. I'm going to go to court as a woman. I said, it's not up for you to say. We leave it to the judge. So I went to court, and I got um, acquitted. I, got off, I, got, I won my court case. Carmen has made a lot of money catering for fringe areas of our society and hers is apparently a booming business. Yet doesn't she tire of the masquerade? How does she plan for her retirement? I think I will get tired uh, being in this nightclub world and I think maybe in about four or five years time I'll be saying 
goodbye to the glamour and the nightclubs and the neon signs. And if I do, I have to become a social worker and help poor and sick people.